Today I am watching Peaky Blinders Season 4, Episode 3. Episode 2, we found out that unfortunately John did die in that gunfight. Michael was injured, but it seems like he's going to be okay. He's recovering. We also saw Tommy and Luca finally met and they made this plan to have some kind of showdown. So I'm not too sure if that'll be in this episode or later on in the series, but I'm very excited to see Adrian Brody added to the cast. I think he's amazing. So I'm a little worried, but excited to see where his character is gonna go. Esme left with the kids. We have this worker strike going on. The police think that Ada is back to start some Bolshevik revolution. So yeah, lots of things stirring, which I think is more common in the start of the episode. And then we kind of see some stories get worked out as the season progresses, but I'm really enjoying the show so far. It is not disappointed. Each season has just been so amazing. So thank you so much for sharing in this first time watching with me. If you have any other suggestions for TV shows you think I should watch, please comment below. And if you want to have a say in what movies or TV shows I watch, be sure to join Patreon. And as always, please like, comment, and subscribe to this channel, and check back often for more awesome content. We're all shallow. Hungry men learn fast. Nice. On you go. Dirty scabs! Yeah, so it's like they just brought in replacements, basically. Oh, God! Yeah, they're not willing to negotiate with the guys on strike. They're like, okay, we'll just replace you, bye. Tumble. Attack. Hey. Close it up. Yeah, it's, uh, it's a shame because there's so many people who want jobs. They could just take advantage of that and they don't have to treat people properly. Like, it's horrible. Fuck. Oh, his adopted mom. Aww. Look. I just wanted to say that you're welcome to come home. Oh, she's so sweet. Oh, guys, I'll not be in the same room as that man. Yeah, that must be so hard. And yeah, he seemed like actually upset when he found out his adoptive dad died. So I don't think he'll ever go back, but it was nice of her to visit, obviously. Over Christmas, I counted it up. So I made a New Year's resolution to change the situation. Oh, my. Anyone particular in mind? Whatever happened to the painter? Just me and someone unsuitable. All right, here we go. Yeah, she's like, I feel free now. Like, she feels like she's cheated death, so she's uh, making the most of it. Here we go. I'll sit in the front. <laughs> A favorable. But I will not behave myself. And no one else is, so why should you? She definitely seems to like have shifted gears. Like she seems more like awake and present and yeah, she's going for it. So Polly's back. Lovely to see you, but I'm late for a meet. They can wait. Oh, my vice president, Mr. Shelby. I've got something for you. Something for a loving husband who's been working very hard. Is it spicy? Oh my. She's closing the blinds. Oh my. Is she gonna relieve that pressure? Um, there we go. Yep, called it. Oh my. It's silk from Japan. Oh my. Feel it properly. <sighs> Quite the uh, social visit we've got going on here. You wanna do this? Yeah. I think so, yeah. I think that's what she's going for. Boss. And tell me what to do, boss. Oh my. This is gonna be very late to this meeting. Oh my. I should have rescheduled. I don't think those walls are soundproof. <laughs> oh my. She's bringing him a drink. Um, what's going on, Linda? Temptations. It's my responsibility as your wife to help you resist those temptations. She came in to have sex with him so that he wouldn't cheat on her. Myself between you and the devil. That's a one heck of a job. Keep his balls empty and his belly full. <laughs> Arthur's like, I could get behind this motto. So I'll deal with Arthur. All those in favor of giving the photographs to Mr. Gold, raise your hand. 
Yeah, and then Mr. Gold will take out this family one by one or find out more information about them. Yeah, I thought it was going to be like a one-on-one -on -one showdown between Tommy and Luca, but that doesn't seem to be the case. Right. And what unites us, this is all temporary. Yeah, temporary, right. Polly's like, I'm done with your BS. I'm not putting up with it anymore. I'm not staying quiet. And yeah, Michael only calls her mom when he wants something from her, basically. And even last episode, she said that word's like a bullet to her. Oh, Arthur's back to his old ways of uh, drugs and violence. Is that what it is? What's this a party? Hey? Pull out of it! Why are they covering everything in like red paint? Oh God! I'm guessing that's what that is. I wasn't gonna reach her. That wasn't. Oh. That fucking mess. Yeah, is that like a sign of their revolution? Just covering everything in red paint. And it's interesting. Usually we see when Arthur has red on him, it's covered in people's blood. Oh no 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 no. Who are these sneaking in the back door? <gasps> oh God! Oh, bonked him. John Shelby. Oh God, he's gonna drown him in the paint. Oh, that's horrible. Oh my God. That paint is probably very flammable. Stratford upon Avon, the home of Shakespeare. Yeah, he's doing research about Tommy. Tommy's doing research about him. Spotted dick. A key force, yeah. Follow me, man, Jai. Well, it's a delicacy in some parts. Yeah, he definitely seems to be very focused on like fashion and appearance. You open your mouth. Come on. Open your mouth. Hey, oh God. Yeah, he's like, if you start acting like them, you'll blend in more. And Adrian Brody's accent and Italian sounds decent. Does he? Is he fluent? Comment below if you know. Arthur Shelby killed a sign of boxing ring four years ago. Oh, God. She would do that for us. Ah. For a price, probably. Yeah, she does hate that family, for sure. Like Cecily, she's like, well, we got that in common. You know, they hate forever. Kill two of them. Ripped out their hearts and burnt their bones to ash. She does have a flair for the violence. Because this was all my fault. It was me that shot the old man. Yeah, out of mercy. Yeah, Arthur feels guilty for getting John killed. Oh my gosh. Take boats. Yeah, like he's like, oh, we were worried about you, but not worried enough to actually like go looking for him. Like, he was more focused on this family meeting. You know what I am, don't you? I'm a working man. Yeah, and then Polly has more voting power and more overall hearsay basically because arthur's not there and then tommy listens to her more what are you doing oh my no for it oh god mm. and we'll go to bed oh my do anything you like oh my do this I have to do it. Yeah, Linda knows that if he goes after him, then he's gonna get himself killed, probably. Yeah, she's like, if I can keep him distracted and, you know, keep him occupied and let Mr. Gold take care of this, then Arthur won't be involved. And, oh, but Arthur obviously feels so guilty about John. He's like, my brother wants me to do this. Like, I have to go after him. So, and I feel like there's no talking him out of it. Like, he's going to do this. You often kids left three days ago. He thinks this guy turned him in. Uh-oh. That made you unlock the door. Give up my brother. 
I didn't unlock any door. It's looking mighty suspicious, though. And today, two men are shot and burnt on my shift. And you ask me why I'm getting on the midnight train to Glasgow. Yep. Uh, I'd be getting out of town, too, to be honest. For you, I was an ordinary working man. Yeah. And now you're one of us. This poor guy, he's like, I tried to leave, I got my family out of the city, like, I was gonna take this train, but they, you know, thought I was up to something bad, and now I'm trapped here, and he's like, I didn't unlock the door, but, you know, it definitely was making him look guilty, so I'm glad Tommy didn't just kill him anyways. What's your improved offer? Do I not get a drink? No. She's like, we're not friends, like, I didn't invite you here. It's from overseas, or attempting to foment trouble. In our factories, in advance of a general strike, which... And kill everybody in your family. What would you like to drink, Constable? Whiskey. I'm actually a sergeant. I only have beer, Tom. He got a badge made up? Oh my gosh. Very... Very thorough research. Greta died at the age of 19. Oh gosh. Oh. And Kitty said you were at her bedside. For three months, every day, holding a hand. And he didn't get consumption? How is that possible? Once you saw a man beating his horse and you fought him, it was twice your size, but you beat him. And then you beat him with his own whip. Sounds about right. Yeah, it sounds like he would do. Now. She swears before you enlisted in the army, you joined the Communist Party yourself. Oh, okay. Interesting. Fuck. He was listed among the shell shocks. Blew his own brains out. Oh my gosh, that's horrible. I didn't remember let him in. I was wondering if he might be able to help me in my investigations. Yeah, and even when they have this wide shot of her sitting by the fire. See you before we start fighting. And even this like orange glow. Give you this. And he's by the window and it's cooler. Greta Rossi and Tommy Shelby. Oh. Blackpool. Young Tommy, throwback photo. But yeah, I just thought that was an interesting contrast in lighting and kind of between their characters as well. The boy in the photograph. Haha, -ha, she's using it against him. That's what he asked her. Yeah, we don't know much about Tommy's life before the war, so it's definitely interesting to get like a sneak peek at, you know, his relationships and just kind of like the life he was leading. Does she recognize them? Why, not, why would you burn it? Hmm, suspicious. Arthur, what are you doing? Who are you shooting? I don't like this. Chris, down from Arthur's house. And his hand was like shaking. Arthur! Who did he kill? Oh my God. Arthur? He fired the bullets. Oh, Lucas. Linda. He says more, more than white so. I don't trust it. Like, I I feel like he's going to go from sad to mad very quickly and things are going to get out of hand. It's easy for him, or it's not easy, but, like, I feel like he's more likely to say, you know, like, okay, I'll do as you say when Linda's, you know, right over his shoulder in his ear, but when he's on his own. Or when he's with Tommy. The rule is that door should always remain locked until 9am. She's like, great, now I got Finn telling me what to do. Let's give our boss a first day that he'll never forget. <laughs> I feel like he's gonna be in for a lot of trouble. Oh my. I wanted to come here with you. Oh my. Are you kissing her or me? Probably both. Oh my, getting spicy down by the docks. Yeah, it's definitely weird to see them back. Like, it feels off. Like, it's nice to see, like, the nostalgia of, like, this previous seasons, but there's just so much history here, and it feels like you just keep waiting for, like, a ghost to show up. Like, this is where he sent off Danny. Non-taxable charitable contributions to local charities, about 25%. As of now. You won't pay your workers properly, but you'll donate to charity. Two former workhouses. I want you to be in charge of the project. Oh my, okay. 
You do realize Tommy Rogan. Yeah, him and Lizzie have a interesting relationship. Like she's stuck by him. They've obviously, you know, been on and off. And then he also tried to set her up when she was engaged to John. But yeah, it's interesting that they're still like, and they found this working relationship now. There's an empty space here to be filled. Do you understand? Real compassionate speech, this guy. Oh my gosh. No! Will she recognize him? She saw the photo. Oh god, she better. Keep your wits about you, Polly. Come on. So. Are she planned on meeting him here? Tommy Shelby. Why should I trust you? Because you know our history. Which is? You know what happened between us. Please enlighten us. Arthur tries. Tommy's different. Yeah, he's definitely, uh... Oh my god! I can't believe this! She's setting out a hit on Tommy. Holly Gray. That child would never let go of agreements. He's not wrong about that. We saw that with Grace, too. She's like, I'll forgive you, but I'll never forget. I don't dance anymore. Yeah, that's a shame. Oh my god! The show! Dancing with me. Oh, yeah, that's true. Oh my gosh. So that was my first time watching Peaky Blinders Season 4, Episode 3, which is crazy because it's only a six-episode season, so we're halfway through the season already, but it's just every episode just keeps getting better. I'm used to shows with longer seasons where there's kind of that, like, dip in the middle, which this would be the midpoint of the season, and it kind of, you know, they have some filler content, and then they go back up to the story, but that is not the case, and I find that's the case with more uh, UK shows is they keep them short, they tell really good stories, and then they move on. They don't just have that filler content for the sake of filling up episodes. And everything in this show seems intentional, which I feel like makes a great show. Like Breaking Bad, everything was so thought out and so intentional, and that's probably why I love that show, just because it was such a gut punch, but also everything was there for the audience, and it was just so well done. But even the detail we find out about Arthur killing that boy in the boxing ring years ago and we saw the mom came into the pub and tried to kill him before and that might just seem like a one-off storyline random and then it's done and put away but they bring it back as we find out that Luca might be using her relationship with the Peaky Blinders to set up Arthur to be killed that might not actually happen now that we see that Polly has met Luca, but still it was just, you're like, oh right, that happened. And just, they're so clever and everything seems to have its own course. And they obviously know where the story is going to go and the audience just gets to explore that journey. And I just, it just makes for such an enjoyable watching experience. We see Finn having his first day running the shop on his own. His character is definitely coming into more play this season, which is going to be interesting to see. And they set him up with a lady as they find out that he's a virgin and they want him to lose his virginity. It didn't sound like something Finn wanted to do again, I'm sure in a different manner, but not having somebody come over for him. So yeah, I'm very curious to see if that interaction will come into play. We didn't get to see the girl, obviously, but yeah, everything feels so intentional. So you're kind of just like, okay, will this come into play later on? And having that interaction between Finn and Tommy at the end where Tommy's like, no, you need to be a man. This is what makes you a man. And like, yes, you look tired, but you know, you shouldn't be worried about that. People are tired on the factory all the time. And it's just, I think he thinks he's a good leader, but I wouldn't phrase it that way. And even when him and Lizzie go down to the docks and he's like, oh, like I want you to run the charity and I promised someone I would make the world better. It's like, but you don't put those things into place in the factory that would affect, you know, a huge amount of people and the working class. And he's just, he only sees it in charitable donations, which is obviously a very nice thing for him to do. But again, I feel like those charitable donations, he gets tax write-off or he gets some kind of contribution 
question back so it's not completely selfless. In my opinion, I feel like there's something he gains from those and now he's gonna set up Lizzie to run them. I just found it a little hypocritical of him to be like, yeah, I'm gonna donate to these charities and you know, I'm gonna make the world better, but I won't give my workers a proper living wage or you know, safe working conditions or pay men and women equally. And when they go on strike, well, too bad. I'll just bring in replacements and I'll have, you know, counting people at the door because jobs are so scarce and everybody's trying to find work. He's like, that doesn't matter to me. But yeah, it was just an interesting comparison between those two situations. May wasn't back in this episode, so I'm curious if she will be in future episodes, but we definitely saw Luca and the Italians back. Comment below if Adrian Brody is fluent in Italian. He definitely seemed like he was having no trouble speaking it. It was convincing sometimes when actors have to speak a different language. Obviously, it's not their first language and it's a bit of off-putting, but I thought he did a great job. And we see those two men try and attack Arthur. Arthur is able to take them out, luckily, but still, it was just the fact they literally just walked in the back door of the factory and Arthur's covered in that red paint, which I thought was interesting because we've seen Arthur covered in red before, but unfortunately, it's usually blood. Arthur's gone back to like season one and two versions of his character where he's back to doing drugs and is very violent again. And I definitely feel like John's death has fueled that and he's just so angry and definitely feels guilty for John's death and blames himself and like he said he's the one that killed that guy and that's what they were coming after that's what this whole retaliation was about and John's the one who ended up dying because of it so I definitely understand he feels guilty and even when we see him shoot the bullet that's meant for Luca and he's upset and he's like you know what it's the modern way and you know like we should just let Mr. Gold take care of this and I'm not sure what they mean by the modern way like them like stepping back more and, and letting other people do their killings for them. I find the dynamic between Linda and Arthur so interesting because I feel like Arthur is very impressionable even though he's the oldest of the brothers. I feel like deep down he's just like a sad little boy and Linda's over his shoulder telling him you know what it's the modern way you gotta let Mr. Gold do this and obviously she doesn't want Arthur to go out there and get himself killed and this revenge streak. We've seen that so many times in the show and you know revenge plans in most shows and movies don't end well so I get why she's trying to protect him but at the same time I don't feel like that moment of sadness is permanent I don't feel like he's fully given up this revenge plan I feel like as soon as he's with Tommy and Tommy's over his shoulder and telling him you know all the good things about John or he starts remembering John and even when he's killing that Italian guy he's saying John's name and I feel like that's those feelings are going to come to the surface again he's going to go back from being sad to angry and then he's going to need to put that anger somewhere and as much as Linda has her own methods of trying to distract him I feel like he's still going to seek out revenge and maybe doesn't tell Tommy and doesn't tell anybody but yeah, I don't think he's done with this plan at all. We definitely saw Polly come back in full swing. She's dressing differently. She's got her head held high. She doesn't seem to be in such a fog. Like she seems to be very, you know, clear and awake and definitely has plans. Um, when we see her tell Linda, hey, you should go distract um, Arthur so that he stays away from this meeting and then they can vote without him which obviously Arthur was upset about and he finds out that Polly's the one who orchestrated that. I feel like Tommy listens to Polly more when Arthur's not around and he definitely seemed to be taking more of her advice so yeah I'm very curious to see how long that lasts and if he finds out that she kept Arthur away on purpose. Like we've seen with the show before, they keep that last, they keep you watching to like the very last second, that last scene when we have Polly and Luca meet. Like at first I thought this was gonna go badly. Like I was like, she'll recognize him. She's seen the photo. Like she's not just gonna take off with him and have no idea who he is like she knows what he looks like and then we find out that they even have a history together that their mothers knew each other so that was interesting I wasn't expecting that and I guess Tommy and his siblings would have been too young to remember that or maybe they weren't in Polly's life at that time but yeah it was very interesting for them to have that connection and then we see obviously the most like shocking news from this entire episode is that Polly is in fact encouraging Luca and taking out a hit on Tommy basically and she's like spare Michael spare Arthur spare Finn basically but she's like go for Tommy like cut the head off the snake go for the top basically and like everybody else was 
did horrible things, but they were following orders. Finn hasn't done anything terrible that we know of yet. He was involved with that train explosion, but again, who knows how much he knew or whatever, but still she wants to protect everybody else in the family, but she is done with Tommy and she's done with everybody else's BS. She is saying what she wants to say and her and Michael are definitely on the outs as well, but she's going for Tommy and I feel like without Tommy, Michael might be a very different person. So, or maybe he would try and take over Tommy's place if this hit is successful please no spoilers but I was not expecting the two of them to have this weird alliance and their mutual dislike for Tommy obviously has bonded them and we've definitely seen Polly keep a grudge because even when Grace came back Polly's like smiling and she's like I'll forgive you but you know it's through clenched teeth she's like I don't forget and probably would have kept that grudge going for as long as Tommy and Grace were together but yeah it's just so interesting to see Polly's character come back I feel like she was kind of in the shadows a little bit for the previous episodes. She was struggling with some other things and now she's back in full swing. She's officially signed, you know, she's fully back in the Peaky Blinders and she means business. She's not wasting any time. She wants to get out. She wants to get to Australia or whatever her new plan is. I definitely wasn't expecting Polly to turn on Tommy, but Again, he's turned on them so many times and he's put them at risk. So yeah, it definitely goes both ways. And Polly is definitely acting a lot bolder, I find, especially now after she had her trip to the gallows and was in the noose. And now she's like, I feel free. Like I'm maybe being reckless, but she's definitely taking risks. And she's like, yep, I want Tommy gone. And, you know, I'll give you whatever information you need. Just don't hurt the other three. Whether he holds true to that or not, he definitely seems like he wants to inflict the most damage on Tommy. But yeah, it was just such a, oh my god, I couldn't believe that's what I was seeing. I can't imagine what would happen if Tommy finds out about Polly's plan, who would tell Tommy, like, I can't see, I mean, maybe Luca wants to take out everybody and he's gonna go tell Tommy and say, hey, like, your aunt just came to me and is actually turning you in and then just watch them, you know, self-destruct, basically. That might happen. I don't know. Please, no spoilers. But yeah, it's very interesting. I feel like Luca's always got one step ahead and Tommy doesn't know that he met with Polly, obviously. I'm glad Polly is standing up for herself and I'm very nervous to see if this plan will go as she has hoped or what will happen. We saw Linda back at the betting shops and we also saw Michael's adoptive mom came back as she saw in the papers that he had been injured. So she shows up with apples and it was just so heartbreaking to see because you could tell that she wanted to be more involved in his life and he's going on his own way basically and he seemed genuinely upset when he found out his adopted dad had died and I think it, we kind of forget that he had this whole life like his entire childhood and growing up with this adopted family and then he joined the Peaky Blinders so he has these two families but I feel like he feels more connected to the Shelby gang and Tommy and he definitely idolizes Tommy. We got to learn a little bit about Tommy's life before the war which we don't really know a lot about and he was dating an Italian girl who unfortunately died of consumption which unfortunately was a very prevalent disease at the time and I'm very curious how Tommy didn't get consumption and it was lethal so the fact that he was sitting by her bedside for three months while she was trying to fight this illness and he was in close contact with her and it's very consumption contagious how he didn't get it maybe he is has some kind of immunity to it but the way she showed him that photo and he kind of I think like for a moment looks at the photo and doesn't recognize himself like it would have been so long ago but the way he looks at the photo and kind of like pauses like I feel like he definitely changed from the war and he's like nobody came back like whether it was physically they didn't come back you know all the way mentally or they were completely different people and I feel like that's definitely true for Tommy we haven't seen him had any nightmares recently he was also asking her about this photo and she ends up burning it either she did recognize those people and didn't want to turn them in or is something bigger going on that we don't know about yet but yeah her character is definitely interesting and we find out that she did lose some Someone in the war as well. I really love the lighting in this show. I've said it before and I'll probably say it again, but it's just so cool and it just makes such a difference and I think just really adds a new artistic element to the show. The cinematography is amazing and the lighting obviously complements that. They work together. So having those shots where it's, you know, just partially of the face is lit and then, you know, different, just like their cheek or something. I feel like we're so used to seeing shows where 
everything is properly exposed and everything is lit and it's nice to have those kind of characters in the shadows and it just adds a whole new element to it and especially given the time having just natural light or you know standing in front of a window to get that light I think plays a big part of it and that scene when Tommy is uh, with the union worker and he's standing in front of the window and they have that shot of her by the fire and it's like this orangey glow and then him by the window and it's this bluish tint and those would be the colors for those lights but still it was just I thought it was more than that I thought the contrast and the colors also play to their character with Tommy being you know maybe a little bit cooler and maybe even cold-hearted and this woman sitting by the warm fire and the warm color and just even her character you know is fighting for this cause and trying to get equal pay for women in the workplace and it was just an interesting juxtaposition between the two of them for sure. Overall I really enjoy the episode the seasons are just getting better and better and better and I'm very nervous as to what this season's gonna be they haven't really set up a season finale typically in the previous seasons like oh we've got this big horse race coming or we've got this robbery coming right now it's focusing more on Tommy and Luca maybe they will have their big showdown in the season finale I don't know but they haven't set like a particular event yet I'm very curious to see what Polly's plan is gonna be with Luca and how that's gonna pan out it's making me very nervous we've already lost a cast member this season I I can't imagine the show without Tommy so I'm very curious to see where that's gonna go what would happen if her plan works if Tommy finds out I'm so glad Adrian Brody is part of this season I think his performance is great so I'm really excited to see him continue but thank you so much for sharing in this first time watching with me if you have any other suggestions for tv shows you think I should watch please comment below and as always please like comment and subscribe to this channel and check back often for more awesome content yeah, they're not willing to negotiate with the guys on strike. They're like, okay, we'll just replace you. Bye. Oh, his adopted mom. Oh, whatever happened to the painter? Why are they covering everything in like red paint? Oh God. And he didn't get consumption? How is that possible? Oh my, getting spicy down by the docks. You won't pay your workers properly, but you'll donate to charity. He does have a flair for the violence.